very much for the introduction and I can uh, start with the slides. Sooner or later we will see also my slides. Right? Yeah, they are, wait. Uh, there was already a, a bit of the, uh, yeah, okay. Try to, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, let's back. Sorry for the spoiler. Okay, let's uh, start from the beginning. <laughs> so here is uh, the title of my presentation, Arat Marut and Bitraven, the same person. Uh, here we are uh, actually working on a case study that uh, to me is a quite a fascinating a case study in German literature. We're talking about an author, uh, Bitraven, uh, who is uh, quite uh, well known, especially was uh, well known um, in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, the most uh, well, the most known uh, novels are probably The Death Ship, uh, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, that by the way was also adapted into an Hollywood movie in the, uh, in the 40s, immediately after the Second World War. And probably the most uh, interesting aspect about uh, this author is the fact that uh, his uh, real identity is unknown. We are talking, I don't know, about uh, some kind of a German uh, Thomas Pynchon or uh, Elena Ferrante, if you know all of these uh, cases of uh, authors who are hiding uh, their identity. Uh, there are some information about uh, him. Uh, for example, he lived uh, most of his life in Mexico. And uh, indeed, uh, you will see it also in his novels. Uh, they are mainly uh, talking about uh, Mexico. And there are many hypotheses about uh, his uh, identity, many sometimes even crazy hypotheses. Uh, and uh, the Germanist uh, in our group, uh, that is Massimo Salgaro, you see the second uh, author in the list, uh, did uh, some research on these hypotheses, uh, trying to identify at least uh, the main, uh, the most reliable hypotheses. Uh, and here I'm showing you the one that is uh, clearly uh, the most uh, shared uh, among uh, scholars. Uh, uh, that is the fact uh, that probably, very probably, but uh, we do not know, uh, Bitraven originally had the name of Otto Feige. Otto Feige, we know that he was born at the end of uh, uh, the 19th century, uh, 1882, if I remember the date correctly. Uh, he was a trade unionist uh, um, active at the very beginning of uh, the 20th century, but then he disappeared. Uh, there are no uh, more information about uh, him. There is this hypothesis that uh, Otto Feige changed at a certain point his name uh, into Rett Marut. Uh, and Rett Marut actually is a quite, uh, it's a better known uh, figure uh, in German. He was a stage actor, uh, he was a director of uh, a journal for a certain period, uh, uh, writing essays about uh, anarchism and astronomy, uh, quite a peculiar uh, figure in himself. Uh, and then again, Rett Marut uh, disappeared. And after the disappearance of Eret Marut, Bitraven emerged. So the theory is that uh, in the end, uh, these uh, three people are actually the same uh, person. And here, what we want to do is to verify this hypothesis uh, using a uh, stylometry. Actually, what I will do today is uh, focus on a uh, slightly sim more simple, uh, simplified question uh, that is, are Eret Marut and Bitraven the same uh, person? I want to focus on uh, Otto Feige because uh, for uh, Otto Feige at the moment uh, we have a very, very limited amount of materials available. While uh, from Eret Marut uh, we have at least uh, two novels, uh, two unpublished uh, novels, but that uh, were actually signed uh, by Eret Marut, uh, so we have the possibility to compare uh, quite an amount of material uh, with uh, Bitraven. By Traven, uh, we have many novels available. What I will do in this uh, paper is that I will compare the only two uh, novels that are known uh, by Rett Marut uh, with the first uh, two novels by Traven, uh, that are at least uh, the closest in chronological terms. Uh, if you want uh, to see uh, all of the documentation about uh, this uh, project, uh, so the scripts, uh, but also the very slides that I'm showing to you, you can use uh, this uh, um, QR code or go to this link. It is bit.ly Traven style with capital T and capital S. And this uh, will uh, actually open a GitHub repository where I have uh, stored all of the scripts, uh, but also, as I said, a link to these very slides uh, that I'm showing to you now. Uh, so the methodology that we decided to use uh, for this research uh, is a methodology that is uh, quite uh, well known, uh, but also quite uh, disputed. Uh, it's known as the impostors. 
for those uh, who do not know the impostors, uh, this is a method that was uh, proposed by Koppel and Winter in uh, 2014. And the idea is that of having a group of writers uh, who cannot be the authors of the text under examination. Uh, so we know in our case that they are not uh, either uh, Marut or Traven, uh, but that can function as uh, distractors uh, in the attribution of the text uh, to the same author. Uh, let's say that they can put into question uh, an attribution of uh, two texts uh, to the same author uh, by uh, trying to put uh, themselves in the middle, uh, let's say, but working as a confounding uh, factor. Uh, the imposters uh, have been uh, implemented into style, uh, into this uh, reference point package for a stylometric analysis. Uh, uh, it's the, the function is called the imposters uh, with an E instead of a no, but uh, indeed it's, uh, it's the same uh, thing we are talking about. Uh, and uh, the implementation logic is described here very briefly. Uh, it was also described by Maciej Eder in a blog post in uh, 2018. Uh, you started by dividing your corpus into three parts, uh, a test a candidate and imposter as a set. Uh, here in our case, a test and candidate will be uh, Marut and Traven, uh, and the imposters uh, will be a selection of other authors. Then you run a multiple stylometric analysis uh, uh, by uh, changing uh, randomly the features uh, of the analysis. Uh, and uh, you try to verify if uh, the, te uh, the test set is closer to the candidate or to the imposters. Uh, so if the imposters are able to put uh, themselves in between, uh, in our case, in between uh, Marut and Traven. The output is just a proportion of how many analyses were able to attribute uh, the test set to the candidate set, so again, Marut and Traven. Here, the problem that there is uh, is uh, where to put a threshold. You get just a score between 0 and 1, and uh, of course, uh, you cannot really say that uh, 0.51 will be indicative of a confirmation. Uh, there should be some area of uncertainty there. And uh, Stylo has implemented a solution uh, to this uh, in defining uh, these uh, thresholds uh, in giving a yes, uh, maybe, or no answer. Uh, and actually, uh, the procedure that is used uh, is a quite a complex uh, procedure. It's a score the shifting algorithm. It was described uh, uh, by Kessemon and others also in a paper that was presented in the DH conference uh, some years ago. Uh, and actually, uh, it's a very powerful approach, but uh, uh, to me, to us, uh, it has uh, some issues. First of all, it's a computational intensive. Uh, it becomes uh, very difficult to run it uh, once you have uh, a very large amount of text. Uh, but then, uh, most importantly, it provides a measure of consistency that has to do with the entirety of the corpus, uh, more than uh, to the relationship that there can be between the impostors and the candidate authors. Because the question for us is to understand how good it can work uh, this uh, comparison uh, between candidate authors uh, and uh, imposters. Uh, that's why we propose a slightly different uh, solution in defining uh, these uh, thresholds uh, that works uh, practically in two phases. For each one of our authors, uh, in a first uh, phase, uh, we try to identify our green area, our yes uh, acceptance area, by taking uh, two texts uh, written by that author and applying the imposter's uh, method. In this case, uh, practically, we would expect uh, to have a very high score. And this uh, would indicate, uh, more or less, uh, what are the expected uh, scores uh, if we are comparing uh, two authors that are actually the same person. And then uh, we take uh, one text again by this author, but then uh, one text by another author and apply again uh, the imposter's method. In this case, uh, we would expect a very low score. We would ex ex expect uh, a rejection, uh, a low score indicating what uh, we call the red area. And then indeed, uh, we repeat uh, the operation many times with different uh, stylometric features and texts. Uh, one uh, problem that there is uh, at the basis here uh, is uh, in finding uh, the imposters, uh, who could be the imposters uh, in our analysis. Uh, because indeed uh, the imposters uh, can be any author uh, who is not uh, uh, Marut or Traven, uh, so in our case uh, we could have done a random uh, selection. What we decided to do was uh, using a corpus, a colimo, uh, that has uh, about uh, 500 authors active in the period of our interest, uh, and uh, doing a preliminary stylometric analysis uh, to identify just uh, the authors that are the closest to Marut and Traven. So the authors that could be the best uh, imposters uh, in our analysis. And then we didn't take uh, all of them, uh, all of the 36 uh, closest authors uh, for our imposters, uh, 
but uh, we uh, isolated the four of them into what uh, we call the development set. I will explain uh, why we needed uh, a development set together with uh, 32 imposters. Because if we go back to our procedure, as I said, the procedure is in two phases. The first phase is that of trying to define this green area. And to define the green area, as I said, you have to take two novels by the same author and compare them with the imposters. Here, uh, to add more variance in the results, we were taking 5,000 words from one novel, uh, so that at least we could get more results. And then uh, to define uh, the red area, the rejection area, here we used what I called again before the development set. These are four authors uh, that we extracted from the imposters because uh, here we selected 5,000 words again from one random author in the development set, compared uh, it with our uh, novel of our author, and the imposters. In this case, uh, we were expecting uh, a low score, so to indicate uh, this red area. We did uh, the analysis by combining many different uh, features. Uh, here there is an overview, but I won't go into the details. Uh, we tried uh, different uh, numbers of imposters, uh, different uh, units of analysis, so words, uh, but also character engrams, uh, most uh, frequent units, uh, culling, uh, distances. In the end, uh, we had a total of uh, 6,600 uh, different configurations uh, by combining uh, all uh, of them uh, together. These are the results, or at least uh, this is a random sample of the results uh, because these are four cases out of the 6,600. And what you can see is that in the majority of the cases we got uh, what we were expecting. Uh, so that uh, you see uh, the green area, the acceptance area, is almost always higher, this is a box plot, so it's almost always higher than the red area. There are some cases of uh, overlap, uh, indeed. Uh, there were some uh, weird uh, cases and uh, unfortunate uh, selections, uh, but uh, in the majority of the cases, we had always uh, this uh, clear uh, distinction. Uh, so based on this, uh, we had uh, the possibility to, to define uh, the thresholds. Uh, and this, uh, in many cases, was quite uh, simple. Uh, uh, to define uh, our green uh, threshold, our green area, we had uh, to simply take uh, uh, the green uh, box uh, in this uh, box plot uh, here uh, when there was no overlap uh, between uh, red uh, and green uh, boxes. Uh, and the same uh, for the red area here. Uh, it corresponded uh, precisely uh, with uh, what uh, we were seeing in the box plot. Uh, a bit more complicated are the cases where uh, there is an overlap, uh, but indeed uh, here uh, the green area was uh, taken uh, as uh, the point of overlap uh, between uh, red uh, and uh, green uh, box uh, plots. Uh, then uh, this uh, area of overlap uh, was actually our yellow area, our area of uncertainty, and then uh, we were going down uh, to the red area. So at least uh, the thresholds uh, were defined uh, like this. Uh, then uh, we also decided to add uh, uh, some efficiency measure to understand uh, if uh, uh, different uh, features, uh, for example, uh, were giving uh, a better accuracy, a, a better result. Uh, this efficiency was just uh, calculated by simply subtracting uh, the median scores uh, of the green uh, and red boxes. Uh, so to go back uh, here, uh, you see this median uh, score uh, was uh, subtracted uh, uh, from this one or uh, this one from this one in order to have an indication of the efficiency of each one of the methods. What we found uh, here is that uh, uh, features uh, can have a different efficiency if you change the culling, uh, the most uh, frequent units, uh, the number of imposters, uh, the unit of analysis. Uh, here maybe I, I should say indeed uh, that uh, with uh, four character engrams we were getting a better efficiency than uh, with a, a simple word frequency. Uh, but actually no feature in itself uh, produced uh, negative uh, scores. Uh, so instead of uh, just uh, selecting uh, the best uh, features, uh, we decided to use uh, this efficiency score uh, just uh, to weight uh, the results uh, for each uh, configuration, uh, because uh, each uh, configuration had uh, its own efficiency. Uh, we had uh, to exclude in the end almost uh, 100 uh, of uh, the configurations out of uh, 6,600. But then for the rest, all of them uh, were giving positive uh, efficiency scores, uh, so we decided to keep them, uh, even if uh, some of them uh, were considered as uh, less reliable. Uh, the final analysis was uh, simply a repetition of uh, what uh, we have done uh, so far, uh, but by finally comparing uh, the two novels by Marut and the two novels by Traven. 
to get a score that should be compared with the green and red area. Uh, by the way, you should have noticed uh, that uh, because I was uh, showing to you box uh, plots, uh, uh, in each uh, configuration the analysis was repeated uh, 50 times uh, because there was an element of randomness uh, there and so we needed uh, to get uh, a general uh, uh, score that it was indicating uh, the average efficiency of the method. Uh, and so here uh, you can see uh, that uh, uh, these are the final results, again, uh, a simple uh, basic selection of the final results uh, where you can see with your naked eye that in the majority of the cases, uh, but uh, with some exceptions uh, like uh, this one here, uh, the final scores uh, that are the ones in gray here uh, were uh, uh, more uh, uh, overlapping uh, with uh, the acceptance scores uh, than uh, uh, with the rejection uh, scores. Uh, so this uh, case, uh, for example, uh, this uh, uh, configuration uh, with uh, eight impostors, uh, uh, 1,500 for characters, 100% culling and entropy distance, uh, was uh, giving a strong uh, uh, confirmation of the fact uh, that uh, these uh, uh, texts uh, by written were written by the same author. Uh, in the end, uh, just uh, to get uh, a single uh, score, uh, a unique uh, result for our analysis, uh, uh, we decided uh, uh, just uh, to count uh, uh, the number of the final scores uh, uh, for each one of the configurations uh, that were falling uh, either uh, in the green area or uh, in the red area or uh, between the two. Uh, so you see, uh, if uh, a one of the 50 analyses uh, that were done uh, and that are represented, uh, for example, by this uh, uh, gray block box plot here, uh, was uh, falling inside of the green area, uh, or the area of acceptance, uh, uh, then uh, this was considered as uh, a confirmation of the attribution. If uh, one score was uh, falling, I don't know, in this case uh, here, if one score was uh, falling in the red area, this was uh, one rejection. If it was uh, falling between the two, in the gray or uh, yellow area that uh, we said before, uh, this was an, an uncertain result. As I said, uh, we weighted uh, these results uh, based on the efficiency of uh, the approaches, uh, uh, using the efficiency scores uh, to give a more or less uh, relevance uh, uh, to certain results, uh, and normalized uh, to get a simple proportion. And you can see here that uh, the result uh, is quite uh, strong in the sense that we have uh, an almost an 80% of uh, confirmation uh, uh, a 20% of uncertain results and just uh, almost a 2% of a negation. Uh, I should say that uh, once uh, we presented uh, this uh, paper, of course, uh, we had uh, a peer review, uh, some, uh, an open uh, peer review that was uh, a very nice experience in itself. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the reviewers uh, suggested the fact that uh, working with thresholds uh, uh, might imply some element of arbitrariness uh, in the definition of these uh, thresholds. That's why we also uh, tried uh, to confirm uh, the results uh, by using a machine learning approach. Uh, I know that uh, this uh, might uh, sound uh, like uh, overkilling uh, the problem uh, because indeed uh, it's a very basic uh, example of machine learning. Uh, but what we did is that uh, we took uh, uh, two simple machine learning algorithms that are uh, uh, KNN and uh, logistic regression uh, and we trained uh, these uh, two algorithms uh, on these uh, green and red scores uh, for each one of the configurations. And then uh, we used uh, these uh, machine learning algorithms uh, for each one of the configurations uh, to predict, uh, again, uh, the class uh, of uh, the final measurements. Uh, what happened, uh, and again, uh, we uh, multiplied by the efficiency scores of each uh, configuration, uh, and what happened, uh, you can see it uh, below here, uh, of course, uh, once you use a uh, machine learning, uh, you exclude uh, this uh, error of uncertainty because uh, the prediction is uh, either green or red, uh, is either confirmed or uh, negated. And you see that uh, the final result uh, makes it even stronger, this uh, confirmation reaching uh, almost a 90%. So indeed, uh, our tentative uh, conclusion is that uh, based on this analysis uh, with the corpus that we used, uh, with the methodology that we chose, uh, we can confirm uh, that uh, probably, actually quite uh, very probably, Retmarut and Vitraven are the same uh, person. Indeed, uh, other approaches uh, can be used, uh, 
uh, this research uh, can and should go on, but at least uh, what I can say is that uh, we have uh, finally provided uh, some uh, scientific evidence uh, to theories that uh, so far uh, were just uh, based on uh, the intuitions of uh, literary scholars. So uh, thanks uh, for the attention and I'm uh, looking forward uh, to answering your questions. <laughs>